This morning there was a beautiful prayer to be healed that was a reflection on this morning's gospel. Oh, my powerful God and merciful Father of my soul, creator of all the things of the earth, since you are my only good, I firmly believe without the possibility of doubt that I am to be saved through the infinite merits of the passion and death of my Lord Jesus Christ. No matter how very great may be the sins of my youth and all that I have committed since then, you, Lord, created me and gave me my body and soul and all that I have. And you, my God, have made me to your likeness and not the false gods of the Gentiles. O Christians, let us give thanks and praise to God, three in one, who has given us to know the faith and true law of his Son, Jesus Christ. O my Lady, St. Mary, hope of Christians, Queen of angels and of all the saints who are with God our Lord in heaven, I now recommend myself to you, my Lady, and to all the saints at the hour of my death, so that you may protect me from the world, the flesh, and the devil, which are my enemies. And, O Lord, St. Michael, defend me from the devil of the hour, at the hour of my death, when I shall have to render an account to God of all my past life. Weigh, Lord, my sins against the merits of the passion and death of my Lord Jesus Christ, and not against my few deserts. Lord, I ask for the faith of a child. Draw me close to your heart, Lord. Draw us close to your heart, Lord.
You have given them bread from heaven. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Together, let us pray the divine praises. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary, most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, virgin and mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph and her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints.
Wow. <laughs> God is so good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Can we give it up to our, our little praise for our worship team over here tonight? That was fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. We're just going to um, take this time while we transition from adoration into our renewal of the mind teaching and allow our ministers of the altar to remove things. Um, I wanted to just introduce myself because I have several students that point out to me, I never do that when we do these things. So um, my name is Kim Engel and I am the school director here at our Encounter School of Ministries Palm Beach campus. And we meet here every Monday night in this beautiful church in front of the beautiful presence of our Lord. And we are learning to grow in the power and love of the Holy Spirit. And these nights are brought to you because of the fruit of that ministry effort. We have been praying as a group in this diocese for many, many years to have something like this. And um, I just wanna thank Bishop Barbarito for letting us be here, for welcoming us and giving us permission to pursue our mission. And I wanna thank Father Gavin for opening the doors up here tonight. This is such a beautiful, a beautiful place to be and um, his support and invitation even to come be a part of your uh, First Friday adorations was just such a beautiful blessing. So I do wanna thank him. And I'd like to thank our guests who are here tonight, um, Pastor Norman Benz from Covenant Center and his family. If, if this is your first time with us tonight, would you mind just raising your hand so we can just welcome you? And I mean, we don't want to put you on the spot, but thank you for coming. We really bless and honor that. It wasn't too long ago, right, Larry um, and Pastor Norman? We were, there was a group of, of Catholic brothers and sisters that came to one of your events and you just welcomed us with such fervor and grace and warmth and that has stuck with us. That was many, many years ago now. And um, here we are being able to invite them back. So um, for those of you who came out for adoration tonight, we want to welcome you to stay and hear from Larry Sparks. Um, it's going to be a beautiful evening. It's still continuing. And as we mentioned before, if you have any healing prayer needs, we are going to offer that near the end of the night as well. So um, I think, do we have some ushers that can help? I just wanted to go ahead and get our fellowship offering out of the way. Uh, so we could bless Larry's time with us tonight and to be able to continue to do these things. Thank you, Miss Beth. <laughs> She's going to just pass out a basket. If you feel on your heart to give tonight, we would just be um, very blessed to be able to bless our guests and um, to continue to do these and bring such dynamic and wonderful ministers to, to share the word with us, right? And I think Larry's word tonight is going to be very powerful and very timely. You guys know this is the first week of Advent and we don't have it lit but during the Advent season, we are called to remember how the Christ child was born into a family, right? We remember how the world waited in darkness, an expectant hope for the light of a savior that would unite us into one heart. Well, this week of Advent centers around the candle of prophecy, which I think is great timing. Um, it beckons us to remember all the prophetic promises of our past that God has given us for the God, for God we know is the Lord of remembrance. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Right? And this is timing up too for those of you who are following the Feast of Hanukkah. In the, in the Old Testament, we see that the Lord instituted these feasts as a way to remember his goodness. Amen? Yeah. So we're, tonight we are entering into the light of the candle of prophecy. And we do this because we must remember so that we never forget God's goodness. No matter how dark the days get or how light they get, we can never forget what God is capable of doing. Amen? So if he could do it then, surely he can do it again, right? That's right. So the gift of prophecy, our feasts and traditions continue to be an important part of the life of our present day church. And that's what we do at Encounter is try to bring all of the truth and the teachings of the prophets, the church fathers, the popes, the saints, and our friends and ministers of the faith throughout our church body to, to come together and bring it all in such a way that we begin to live lives of transformation. That it doesn't just stay here where we feel his presence and we feel consoled, but that it pours out into our communities. Amen? 
that it, that it would actually touch our families, amen? Touch our workplaces, transform our communities into vibrant centers, cynicals, small families, whatever you want to call it, small groups of holy fires. And tonight, yes, thank you, yes. Tonight, we are going to start a fire here. I believe it. That's right. <laughs> I believe Larry's got a strong word for us in this regard, too. And I just want to remind our Catholic brothers and sisters of a really important key word from um, Pope John Paul XXIII. Mm. He said this um, in 19, uh, six, 1950. Yeah. I think it was 19, 19, late 1950s, early 60s. But he, he actually called on the Holy Spirit. And he said, renew your wonders in our time as though for a new Pentecost. Amen. Our Pope, the traditions of our church, we're calling on this new Pentecost. And that's important for us to be reminded of tonight in this week of remembrance. So I just want to ask, I want to invite you up here, Larry, so we can pray for you. And um, our worship team is here too. But before you begin, I want to pray for you. Kim, Kim you, got you can something? pray. You no, know, no, you can pray for me. I, I need all the prayer I can get. As long as, can you hear me okay? Yeah. I'm usually used to the kind of the our, our charismatic Pentecostal handheld mic, so this is great. We get the yeah. You get to speak loud for us. We all right. Do, we have a, quite a bit of an echo here, so that's you all right. Need to take it off and hold it to feel comfortable. Oh there no, no, no this is fine. <laughs> But as you shared that, literally, I just showed Pastor Norman, I, I have this book that I'm going to be citing from, and I, I had it marked for tonight where it talks about Pope John had spoken of the council prophetically as a new Pentecost, directing every Catholic in the world to pray daily during the three years duration of the conclave, Lord, renew your wonders in this day, our day, as by a new Pentecost. Amen. Literally what she just said. That's it. So God, I, I believe God wants to pour that out tonight. For sure. Oh, God. You're so good. Thank you so much. This yeah. is going to be good. All right. I'm going to invite all of you to extend your hands in grace towards okay, our brother. I got you. <laughs> and we're just going to say, come Holy Spirit. Yeah. Can I put my hand on your you shoulder? Sh yep, all yep. right. <laughs> come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. That's right. Manifest your presence here tonight in our brother Larry as he begins to speak in boldness your holy word of truth. Yeah. May it kindle in us a fire of love in each of our hearts tonight, Father. We ask you that you would just open our minds to receive your truth, open our hearts, our ears to just hear what it is that the Spirit wants to share with us through Larry tonight. We ask you, Lord, that you would just come in power yeah. and love. Come in power and yeah. love, Lord, and demonstrate your goodness here tonight, reminding us of everything that you have promised your people here before your son who died to save us, who loved us, who came to restore us to relationship to you, Father. I just thank you that we are here tonight with Larry and all of our family and friends yes. and guests here in this house in one accord, Lord. We just repeat the echo of Paul we, in Ephesians, yeah. you, that we are one family, yeah. one body, yes. one Lord, one baptism, one spirit, Jesus, in you. We have come together to feast together as a family tonight in this holy season of Advent. And we just invite you holy angels and holy saints to just come and yes. minister to us. Break through and protect this house of worship, Lord, tonight. Just seal your word in us. And angels, we just invite you into our hearts. Move mightily. Move and break open whatever needs to be broken open so that we can receive fully the power of the Holy Spirit tonight. And we ask all these things in the powerful name of Jesus and in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you, Kim. Welcome. Thank you. Honored, honored to be here. Oh, this is a joy. When I was growing up in Stamford, Connecticut, my parents were very nominal in their practice of the Catholic faith, um, but they knew enough to prophesy over my life, and they sent me to an elementary school called Holy Spirit Catholic School. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Dad. Because I'll tell you this, and I just want to say this as a word of honoring from my tradition to yours. Because of being brought up in the Catholic faith, I never disbelieved in the move and the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because then I came down to Florida, I went to a different kind of 
um, religious school, and sadly, I was taught against the move of the Holy Spirit, that somehow he stopped doing miracles, that he stopped doing signs and wonders and the supernatural. So I'm very grateful for the foundation, and I honor that here. Amen. God honors that here. Amen. I'm going to do my best to get through this, because I do have believe there's a word. But in just a moment, and I'm glad we have our worship team there, and I talked to Kim about this, because I, I am under your authority tonight, my friend. There's something that was released in this room when they started playing Let It Rain. Wow, I feel it even now. Sometimes with worship, that's what happens. I don't know how to explain it, except we'll sing something, and that's something God wants to release. Because I don't know about you, I love the songs that we sing. I mean, I even go back to a lot of the wonderful songs in my Catholic hymn book. But I want to see what I sing about manifest. I want to see it released. I believe tonight, I, I came here tonight with this stirring in my spirit, God, is this the day? Is this the day, God, we enter in to those realms of glory where everything that we read about we can experience? I believe he's going to do that. Who, whoever's hungry tonight will taste and see. Not because Larry has any ability. I don't. I was worried I might be weeping through this just because we were undone, undone by the presence of God as the worshipers here, as the team, but as all of you were so faithful just to engage with God. There's a precious presence of God here. I hope you can feel it. I'm not going to get up here and do any kind of charismatic shenanigans <laughs> to try to make it. God is here, and we welcome him. And I felt like while we were worshiping, he's hosted well here. Kim, you host him well. St. Ignatius family, you host him well. Isn't that amazing that God can be hosted? I, I, that, that shocks me. But there are some people, I, well, let me say it this way, and this is kind of a little bit of a shock statement. I don't tolerate the Holy Spirit. I celebrate Him. I celebrate Him. I always like to say that because people are like, where are you going with that one? I, t I celebrate Him. I celebrate the unusual. If there's weird stuff, we deal with it. We want people to feel safe. But I would rather pastor and shepherd some weird stuff and let Holy Spirit do what he wants to do. Because the world out there needs a church that's burning with the fire of God. Because every time I read the news and every time I'm inundated with social media feeds and every time I'm looking at that stuff, I could get hopeless. But then I'm reminded of Romans 8 where it says the earth is groaning. The earth is... So when you read the news and it's really bad stuff, I, I know you can get discouraged easily, but just recognize that's a sign that the earth out there is groaning for you and I filled with the Holy Spirit to actually bring him into Publix, bring him into 2Js, where I went today. I feel like Holy Spirit is always in 2Js, actually. <laughs> we don't have that in Texas, folks. So I come here and I get all the 2Js I can have. Before we just go back, because, you know... We can laugh in church. We can have a good time. But I, I believe God is going to do something significant tonight. We'll go back into that in just a moment. Um, a few things I just wanted to note before we dive on in. Number one, I have a book here that I compiled. I love Advent. I, I wish my Protestant brothers and sisters would be more Advent-oriented. We did a whole book, actually, on Advent. And it's with people like Bill Johnson, Heidi Baker, um, compilation of 24, 25 entries taking people through a supernatural prophetic perspective on Advent. So I, I wish I could tell you I was a good promoter of my books and I had them with me. I don't have any, but it's on Amazon and it's good. So yeah, the glory has come. Um, and then last thing I was going to do is say this. It's legal, and I actually had a friend of mine prophesy tonight. They, I, they knew I was coming here to minister, and they texted me, and this is somebody I trust. Um, they said, healing is going to break out. Whoa. Well, I'm not a healing evangelist. Now, I, all of us can pray for healing, but what I, and I said, God, okay, you got to give me a confirmation, and I felt he said this. He said, Larry, you don't even need to get up there and talk about it. At the end, we're going to have the prayer teams minister, but I want you to be receptive because as God's holy presence comes with increasing measure here. Any of you who are sick 
any of you who are afflicted, not just in body, but also I feel like the Spirit of the Lord is saying in the mind. Anxiety, torment, fear. I feel even right now the Spirit of the Lord is saying, for those of you who when it just, when the calendar shifts into December, there's all sorts of anxiety and sadness that comes. I actually believe the Lord's going to release deliverance tonight in His presence. Not because I'm going to come and lay hands on everybody. We are going to pray, but just because God is here. I believe bodies are going to be healed. I believe souls are going to be delivered tonight in his presence. And that's normal. That's normal when God moves in our midst. Amen. All right. I, I think I'm going to dive on in because I want to, I want to be faithful to release um, what the Holy Spirit wants to do. And then at the end, I'll have the musicians, we'll, we'll have a time of just engaging with this. All right, so I'm doing my best. Well, the funny thing is this is actually an Advent message. Believe it or not, I have an appropriate Advent message. Um, I sometimes don't do well with the holiday messages, uh, but here's my question. The message title is a question. Who will make room for the move of God? Who will make room for the Holy Spirit? Who will make room, and this is the word that I'm using, and I'll tell you why, Pentecostal fire. I almost feel like when I say that, it's funny, there's weight on that statement, Pentecostal fire. And I actually feel like my Catholic brothers and sisters almost have a greater context for that than sometimes some of my other brothers and sisters do. Because I was talking to a brother before we started tonight, and he got Pentecost in terms of we celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. Um, and even the Pope, not just in the 60s, but I will tell you this, 1897, the Pope at the time, there was, I think it was, the story goes, a little old, a lady, nobody really knows who she was, but she felt provoked by the Lord to write to the Pope and actually encourage him to sing pray, a novella to the Holy Spirit, 1897. This is a reminder that even people, if you ever feel like, well, I'm, I'm just me, who's going to listen to me? Again, this lady, history doesn't really tell us anything special, except she was persistent, reminded him, hey, she really sensed we need to sing, pray a novella to the Holy Spirit in 1897. That's exactly what they did. And I really believe it had everything to do with our Catholic brothers and sisters prophesying into the 1900s, which became recognized as the century of the Holy Spirit. So I honor that even right now, God. I honor those who've gone before us in the Catholic faith and tradition who prophesied the great outpouring of the Spirit that we saw throughout the 1900s. And that now I believe we're stepping into a greater expression of that. So in March of this year, I went to a church in Phoenix, Peoria, Arizona. And this is what I tell people about this particular church. You need to go there with a seatbelt you need to go with maybe a helmet. Come hour four, you might need electrolytes and granola. Pastor Norman was with me. It's intense. It's intense. They're dear friends. I love them. And they are actually pressing in to redig that well of Pentecost. Pentecostal Assemblies of God Church living up completely to their denomination and their history. And it was funny, they called me up on stage, and again, they prayed over me, they prophesied over me, it was powerful, I felt the Lord, I didn't quite 100% understand all that took place, but you don't have to understand 100% everything that takes place when God touches you, but talk to Him about it. Yeah. Holy Spirit touches you tonight, and you don't fully, like, cerebrally get it, I encourage you, He is a talking, communicating God. Ask him, Lord, what did you do to me? Because that's exactly what I did. I said, God, what did you do to me? I felt your power. They encouraged me. And he didn't really tell me what was done to me. He just made an announcement. And the Lord told me this. Larry, tell my church I'm reintroducing her to Pentecostal fire. And every time I say that, I just sense the pleasure of God because the church was born on the day of Pentecost. And I believe Jesus is coming back for a church that's in revival for a Pentecostal church, not Pentecostal by denomination, because there are Pentecostal denominations. I love them. They're, they're my brethren. At the same time, sadly, there are Pentecostal denominations that have gone away from their roots. And I say, Lord, you're not coming back for a denominationally Pentecostal church. You are coming back for a church that is burning bright in the fire of Pentecost. So that's what has gotten me on this Pentecostal fire thing. I, I do have a book coming out 
in May called Pentecostal Fire, Your Supernatural Inheritance. I felt like the Lord told me to write that. I did it very, and this has really become the message of my life. So I go and share this wherever I travel. So, but, but, I, but here's the thing. I say, Lord, what do you want to say to each community? So I believe that there are certain unique things he wants to share with you fine folks tonight. Let's open up the scriptures. Here are my main texts for tonight. And this will be an interesting combination, but track with me. Luke 2, verse 7, and then we're going to go to Acts 2, probably 1 through 5. Because I will say this about Pentecost. A word that I like to use is revival. Revival. I, I, I love it. I, I, I know that it comes with baggage. I know there's people who don't like it. I, I understand that. I think I like it because... I got my Master of Divinity from Regent University, and I studied revival. I studied the great revivals that really made our nation what it is. Not even just our nation. I, I was just in England and Scotland. That's a land of revival. That's a land of the move of the Holy Spirit. So I love the word revival, but here's my definition of revival. Revival is simply a return to Pentecost. We're just going back to normal. And as our friend Sid Roth likes to say, normal as defined by the Bible. Because there's some people who say, well, I'm, I'm a normal Christian. Y yes, but are you flowing and moving in the power of God? Do you operate in the gifts of the Spirit? Well, well, I don't, I don't believe in all that. That's abnormal. No, no, no. That's actually quite normal when we look at the New Testament. So I want to encourage you, be normal. Be normal. <laughs> All right, I love this. Uh, okay, Luke 2, verse 7. Strange verse, I know. And she, speaking of Mary, brought her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. That one verse, what's the point of that? There was no room for them at the inn. Did you know that the innkeeper turned away the greatest move of God in history. Wow. The innkeeper, who I wouldn't like to have been in their shoes, they turned away. Think about this. I'm not just pulling on this for an illustration. That's 100% true. They ended up going to a manger. They ended up going to a very non-religious, non-hospitable place. Why? Because there was an innkeeper. They came to the inn. The holy family came to this inn, to this hotel, whatever it was at the time. They came to this place of refuge, hoping that they could have birth Jesus there. And they were turned away. Why? No room. I do not want to be like the innkeeper. I don't want to turn away the move of God. Why did he turn away? Mary, Joseph, and the soon-to-be-born baby Jesus. I'll tell you why. It's really quite simple. It, the inn was filled with other people. I have to think in the 21st century sometimes, the inn that we call our Christian lives might be filled with a lot of other things. Might be filled with a lot of other things. And this is not to make us feel bad or condemned. It's to say, God, tonight, Holy Spirit, even now, we ask you to shine a light of conviction on us. Never condemnation. He's good. But he does show us areas where, you know what? You could make more space for me there. So I say that for our individual lives, but the thing I'm going after for is in, in the church, not the Protestant church, the Catholic church, I, I think God loves what happened here tonight because Kim and your team, I only pick on you because I know you, you guys have decided to make room for the Holy Spirit here. I prophesy even over this, this church that this church will be blessed just even because of what goes on in these types of gatherings because you have made room for the Holy Spirit, but also the leadership here has given you authority to make room for God. Oh God, let it be. Let there be increase. Let there be healing. I even pray right now in the name of Jesus that during Mass, as the, I, I just see a picture, as the sacraments are received, as the Eucharist is given, I pray for healing. Just, just, just let's pray into this for a minute. God, I pray for divine healing as people partake of the Eucharist, as they partake of the body. Actually, I, I, I prophesy that miracles are going to come because people have partaken of the body, because 
Isaiah 53 reminds us, by his wounds, by his stripes, because he was whipped, because his body was torn, we're healed. God so showers his blessing on places that are not perfect, but they make room for the move of God. I feel that, Kim, about this church. I feel that about this house here. He's so delighted, and he met us so beautifully tonight because you make room for him. Again, I don't want to be like the innkeeper. Does that illustration make sense? It's, it's a tough one, but at the same time, he will find a manger. God will find a place where moves of the Spirit can be born. If he has to bypass some busy places, if he has to bypass some people or communities or, or places where there's no room for him, that's fine. He'll find a place and he'll find a people. And I say, Lord, let us be your place. Let us be your people that you move through. He'll find, he'll find a place. He found a manger. I'm going to go into this a little bit more in a few minutes. He found a place in 1906 called Azusa Street. He found a place in the 1960s called Duquesne University. He will find a place. I declare that. He will find a place. And we tonight say, Lord, we will be your place. We will be your people for you to move through. We will not restrict, we will not restrain the move of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2. I love this one. Acts 2 starting with verse 1, very familiar, but just track with me. I'm reading out of the New Revised Standard uh, Version of the Bible. Verse 1, when the day of Pentecost had come, they, now they is referring to the 120 people in the upper room, they were all together in one accord in one place. I love this, verse 2, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. I want to see what it looks like again for entire buildings to be filled with the presence of God. This tells me it's possible. This tells me it's possible for a room to be filled with a sound, for a room to be filled with a wind. Don't, don't let, l listen, I can assure you, I am a dignified, educated individual. <laughs> I've done my best. Okay, I, I, I do what I can to be theologically solid and historically accurate. But I know if I'm going to do both of those things, I cannot deny the fact that the God that we worship and the God we serve still can fill a room with his real, literal, physical, manifest presence. And I honor once again our Catholic brethren for recognizing the manifestation of the actual presence of God when we gather together for the Eucharist. I've always admired that because there's an expectation that I'm not just going through some ritual, He's here. But I want to encourage you, that same God who's powerfully, uniquely present in the Eucharist, I believe He does want to fill rooms again. He wants to fill spaces he wants to meet us like we see here in Acts chapter 2. Continuing on, filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Last verse I'm going to read. Now there are devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, what sound? The sound of the Holy Spirit the sound of the mighty rushing wind, the sound of the clamor, and I'm sure the disorder and the wildness that was happening in the upper room. At the sound, it says that the crowd gathered. Other translations say the multitude came together and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. I have three points to draw from this portion of Scripture. Because again, I don't want to be the innkeeper. I want to be somebody that God visits and moves through and that there's nothing obstructing him. And just by the way, before I give you these three points, guess what? God historically, intentionally, continuously, he uses imperfect people. You don't have to be perfect in order to be used by God. Okay? I mean, he convicts us. We repent. 
It's one thing, again, appreciate about what goes on in a gathering like this, is we focus on those things, but the one thing that will restrict and restrain a move of God is a person or a people who are unwilling to accommodate him, who are unwilling to welcome him, perhaps sometimes in the more unusual ways that he moves. Listen, I've, I've seen it all. Pastor Norman, I could probably have you come up here and share all manner of interesting things that the Holy Spirit has done. And I have to honor Pastor Norman Benz. Thank you for being here. I know you were honored before. This is my pastor's spiritual father. <laughs> Grateful for you being here. But somebody who's actually, with his eyes, seen revival. 1997? Was it Father's Day? And Holy Spirit came and you said it was awesome and it was awful. <laughs> but you know what? Every great move of God has been like that. Why is it awful? Because you know what it does? It pushes against the way we've always done things. It pushes against comfort. It pushes against status quo. And it seems to like tear that apart. And we have two options in a moment like that. We could resist the Holy Spirit. We could. Do you know how I know that? Because Paul says to the church in Thessalonica, do not quench the Holy Spirit. And the actual Greek rendering of that, Pastor, you know this one, don't put out the Spirit's fire. I don't want to put out the Spirit's fire. That's the one thing. He's not looking for perfect people. He's always doing a regeneration and a cleaning on us, sanctification on us. But he's looking for willing people. He's looking for people who will say, Holy Spirit, you can come and do what you want to do. And we are willing in a church gathering, in our lives, in our everyday lives. All right, let me give you these three points here. So these are the three things that I see that happen in Acts chapter 2. And I believe these are three things that are highly relevant for where we are right now, preparing us for what God is doing and will do. Number one, and this is very important, they were in one place in one accord. That's what we're doing here tonight. I could not escape Acts chapter 2, verse 1, coming here. I mean, this is a historic, beautiful thing where we have, I, I don't even like to say Catholic and Protestant, we've got one body here, one church, one place, one accord. That's why his presence, listen, I've gone to gatherings where I don't feel any presence of God. I've gone to gatherings where it's basically Christian entertainment. Sadly, tonight the presence of God was here. I don't go to my knees or weep. I don't do that because I need to make a show or show you I'm spiritual. He was here. He still is. And I believe he so graces it and blesses it when we come together one place in one accord. But here's my question. What were they doing when they were in one place in one accord? Acts 1 tells us what they were doing before the Holy Spirit came. They gathered consistently, which you're all doing, but they were in a place of prayer. You know what they were praying? I think, I propose, they were praying in response to what Jesus said in Luke 24, where he said, stay here, because Jesus was getting ready to leave, stay here, remain here in the city, and you're going to be endued or filled with power from on high. Think about it, though. We, we all talk about Acts chapter 2 and Pentecost, and I love all that. They had no idea what they were looking for. All they knew is we're going to stay here together. We're going to gather together in one place in one accord because we're going to receive some kind of power. That's all they knew, and they were faithful to do that. So are we praying for what they are praying for? In other words, here in the 21st century, let me, let me just kind of bust some theological bubbles a little bit. We are not praying for the same thing that the apostles were praying for. They had not received the Holy Spirit yet. Okay? They didn't get the baptism of the Holy Spirit yet. We're not, but we're following their model. What are we praying into? I'll tell you exactly what we're praying into. We're praying into an old prophecy from Joel chapter 2 that Peter said again in Acts 2. What did he say? In the last days says who? Not the latest and greatest best-selling book. Not the prophet who's very popular on YouTube and Facebook. It says that not the charts and the graphs that sometimes we like to bring out when we're charting the end times. And yeah, that's fine. That has a place. But it says, in the last days says God. 
if I'm going to build my life on any last day's language, last day's prophecy, I'm going to build my life on what God directly says. And he said in Joel 2, and it was repeated in Acts 2, and this is the thing we are gathering together in one place in one accord to pray here in the 21st century. In the last days, God declares what? I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. And even tonight, as, as I just heard it, let it rain. It's like, God, would you soak the earth? Soak the earth. Because, God, that's what you promised. We will be like the apostles. We're not asking for the Spirit of God to come down from heaven again because he's here. That actually changes a bit of the way we pray. It's not like, oh, God, would you send your Holy Spirit? He's here. One man will split the sky and return to the earth, and that's not the Holy Spirit. That's Jesus. And I know... I remember as much from my Catholic background as this, Christ has died, Christ is risen, and he will come again. Sometimes my peers in my particular faith communities don't really pay much attention to that last part, he will, but he will come again. But Jesus is coming again. Holy Spirit's here. We're not praying for Holy Spirit 2.0. I know it sounds funny, but sometimes we're acting and we're begging, oh, God, send your Holy Spirit. No, he's here, but we are praying into a promise. One place, one accord. And I want to encourage you, when you guys gather together, whether it's all of you or just a few of you, and of, of course there's always other things for us to do, I want us to incorporate into our personal liturgy, praying into Acts 2, Joel 2, God, would you pour out your Spirit on all flesh? Because you know what it goes on to say? And this is going to be meaningful to some of you. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. I don't know how many of you have maybe sons and daughters who have gone away from the Catholic faith or sons and daughters who have turned away from Jesus. But there is a promise in the Scriptures that your sons and daughters, it's not a matter of them just coming and sitting next to you in, in the pew. That's great, and they will. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, which, which means they'll declare the word of the Lord with power. So we hold on to that. We hold on to that promise. One place, one accord. And my last little note about that is this. There is a measure like we experienced tonight. There is a measure of encounter with God that's always available when we come together in one place, in one accord, and pray. It's not a matter of, well, I hope God shows up or I hope I experience him. I mean, we know he's always there. He's always ready to draw near, because what does Scripture say in James chapter 4? You draw near to God, and He'll draw near to you. So my encouragement is this. Every time we gather together like this, again, with our families, in whatever respective context we meet God, He's always there. There's always a measure of divine encounter waiting for you. It may look different. That's fine. But here's the thing. There's a difference. Because I've been talking about one place, one accord, that faithful, steady, continuous coming together, praying these promises, because that's a setup, you see. One place and one accord was a setup for the next verse. The next point is this. Remember, it says when, they, when the day of Pentecost had come, just reminding, the 120 were in the upper room, gathered together in one place, and suddenly. So I, I, I can't escape that. Is suddenly, that's why I, I, one of the first things I said is, is this the day, God? I was driving around Palm Beach today, and I was just overtaken by the Holy Spirit. Uh, not while I was driving. Um, that's, that's, that's not good. <laughs> but I kept saying, God, is this the day? I, I want to live, every time I gather like this, in any meeting, I, I'm looking with expectation, is this the day he'll break out? Is this the day? I want to encourage you to add that to your vocabulary when you gather together like this. Is this the day, God? Is the, and again, like I said, there's always a measure of encounter that we have when we come together. At the same time, the earth out there for how dark it is, you know what it needs from the church? It needs another suddenly. What is a suddenly? It's that sudden moment that punctuates our history books where you see these times of revival Every time of revival, awakening, whatever we want to call it, it usually begins with a suddenly, a breakout of the Holy Spirit, where God does something in a very demonstrative, dynamic, powerful way. So I want to encourage you to always be looking, God, is this the day? 
Is this the day, God, we enter in to new dimensions, new realms of glory? That's not weird stuff. It's just new levels of experiencing the God that we read about. Because I don't read the Bible just to add information to my brain. I read it to know the God who's given me an invitation through the blood of Jesus to actually know him, walk with him, listen to him, talk to him, and experience him. He's a person. He's a person. I think that's one of the things that our children need to get. I'm, I'm, I'm 38. I have an 11-year-old. And my goodness, the things that are going after her generation, yeah. now I feel old saying that, well, back in my day, they didn't have that. They didn't have TikTok. They didn't have YouTube. They didn't have the accessibility of all this stuff. There's so much of a swamp of junk aimed at her. But what I pray is always this. It's like, God, may she taste and see that you're good and that you're better. May, may our children taste that God is better than sin. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's why Holy Spirit and doing what we did tonight, non-negotiable. It's non-negotiable for the hour that we're living in. And again, sometimes it looks weird. I've seen unusual things happen when the Holy Spirit comes. People shake, people tremble, people fall, people laugh, people cry. I welcome all of it. Because we all respond emotionally and we all respond differently. My favorite little thing that people will say, typically critics of that, will say, well, that's the flesh. And I'll disarm them by saying, yes, it is. <laughs> it is. You know what it is? It's our flesh, our human flesh responding to a real God. Because he is not a concept. God is not a concept. He is not an idea. He's not like Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny. He's not in outer space somewhere with Captain Picard and Doctor Who sounds silly, and I'm a bit of a nerd, so I like to throw in some sci-fi stuff. But he is real, he's a person, and I live right now by Isaiah 64, 1, that cry, God, rend the heavens and come down. What does that mean? It means tear open the heavens, God, and come down. That is what our children need to see, a God who literally tears open the heavens and breaks into real time and space. And that's the suddenly. And that's what I'm contending for. And that's what we're going to pray into tonight. It's like, God, let this be the day. While I was sitting up there, I already sensed that unusual move of the Holy Spirit here. I don't want to add to it. I don't want to subtract from it. I don't want to manufacture anything. I just want to be sensitive tonight to see what he wants to do. So remember, number one is one place, one accord. We gather and we pray, responding to the promise of God. In the last days, he'll pour out his spirit on all flesh. Number two, God rewards that with suddenlies. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a brief historical outline of what that looks like to stir your faith. But here's the last thing that happens, and I read about this briefly in Acts 2, verse 6. Do you know what the suddenly produces? And this is what we need. When God breaks out suddenly and powerfully, it produces a sound. Because the day of Pentecost came with a sound, sound of a mighty rushing wind, the, their tongues and fire and all sorts of Pentecostal phenomenon. And sometimes, as I was saying before, those things make us a little uncomfortable. And even though I, I, I made the joke, well, I don't tolerate the Holy Spirit, I celebrate him, sometimes people resist and reject those unusual movements of the Holy Spirit when in fact, look at Acts 2, verse 6. It actually tells us there what brings the multitudes to our churches. The secret to church growth is in Acts 2, verse 6. Because it says very clearly, Acts 2, verse 6, when the multitude heard the cool and hip preacher. Now, I didn't, didn't say that. I know, I'm, I'm being silly. Because it really said, when the multitude saw the light show and the smoke and the fog machines. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say when the multitude recognized that the church had a children's facility, you know, recognized the church was like Hollywood and Disneyland. Listen, let's be excellent, okay? This is not a dig at the church. Let's be excellent because I'd rather have us be professional and excellent than banging pots and pans together. Be excellent. But if our excellence, please hear my heart, if our excellence and professionalism are a result of a trade, what does that mean? I'd rather have excellence and professionalism than that Holy Spirit stuff. Than that which is supposed to be good, being excellent and professional is evil. Amen. 
You hear my heart. None of that's bad. Be the best you can be. God deserves it. God deserves excellence. But if all of that is the result of somebody intentionally saying, I'd rather have that than the Holy Spirit, I pray, I pray that that heart would find repentance. Because you know why? The multitudes aren't waiting for a song and dance. It says, when they heard the sound, the multitude came together. Sound of what? Sound of Pentecost. Whoa. The sound of fire. The sound of wind. The sound of tongues. It says they were bewildered. I love it right after that. It says they were amazed. They were bewildered. They were confused. They were perplexed. And then at the end of that portion of scripture, it says, and then some mocked. Some mocked and said, oh, these people who are speaking in tongues and this Pentecost stuff, they're, they're just drunk on new wine. They're drunk. You know what we often do is we will <laughs> we'll have a few critics, not many, but there will be a few, and we will reorient everything we do to accommodate the voices of a few rather than to make room for the multitude. I have no apology in what I'm saying tonight. That is why I bless churches like this. I bless those who have carried on the roots of the charismatic Catholic renewal. I bless that because when I come here, which is a beautiful tapestry of new and ancient and honor and reverence, and nobody's trying to please anybody except host Holy Spirit and honor God, I love that about what we experience tonight. There's so many churches like that. You know, the one I told you about in Arizona where you need the helmet. Same thing. <laughs> same thing, just different. But their heart is the same. We must, we, we, at all costs, we must honor the Holy Spirit. Do you know why? Because the Holy Spirit is the greatest evangelist of Jesus. Right. Holy Spirit is the one ultimately who convicts people of sin and reminds them that Jesus is the only way to the Father. We can get up and say those things, and we do, and we should, but it's the Holy Spirit on the heart, just like the multitudes. The 3,000 on the day of Pentecost talks about how the Holy Spirit pierced their hearts. And they asked the question, what must we do to be saved? And you know what the church growth strategy was there? Tongues of fire, a rushing wind, Pentecostal manifestations, and I guess a bunch of people looking like they were drunk. And again... I know sometimes people take that in strange, silly ways. Let's just say this. It looked different. It looked unusual. And yet 3,000 that day came into the kingdom of God. What am I saying? We need Pentecostal fire. It's non-negotiable. We can have pews and Pentecostal fire. We can have stained glass and Pentecostal fire. We can have organs and Pentecostal fire. Do you see what I'm saying here? I love all the traditions that we have in, our, in, our, in Christendom. I love it. I honor them. But we, that, that's what I love about this. We have all this. We are honoring our heritage. But there's a heritage that goes back even further. And it is the heritage that we've received on the day of Pentecost. Receiving the Holy Spirit. And above all, we honor him. One place, one accord. Suddenly. And it's that suddenly that releases the sound that brings in the multitudes. So I'm going to finish up here. Kim, are we good? Okay. I'm going to finish up, and I just want to give you some bullet points here because the Lord did give me a prophetic word. Um, it's not just for this church. It's, it's for going into 2022. And I, I, when I say a prophetic word, I'm very careful about using that language unless God has given me something. And I am 100% convinced this is the Lord. I was teaching at a Bible school in Dallas, and there, there was a bunch of students there, and it was wonderful. But then the Lord started to move just sovereignly, and I started to prophesy beyond... I was talking about this very subject, about the suddenly outbreaks of God. And the Lord said, the suddenlies... Sometimes we're looking for those suddenly outbreaks in the big meetings, in the big venues, in the big conferences. The Lord said guess what? Small is the new big. He didn't give me a number. I feel like he likes 120. <laughs> I feel like this kind of group can get things done. But I want to encourage all of you, when you gather together as families, when you gather together in small groups, when you gather together, even just, I mean, all I can think of today, 
uh, uh, just allow me a moment to kind of reminisce. I, was, I went to Palm Beach Atlantic University. That's where I went to school. And I went back to my old dorm room. Um, the, the, and Jennifer, you, you, were, you were there, but you were somewhere else. And it's funny, where my dorm room was, I don't know if they're condemning the building or something. They're closing it, towers. Um, but I went to that room, 111 is where we stayed for a couple years. And all I can remember is this. Wow. Oh. And as soon as I started thinking about it, I go back into it. I remember one night, Joseph Webb. Do you remember Dr. Webb? Remember he was ill. He was ill, one of our professors. And I think he was kind of knocking at death's door at the time. It's not good. So we just gathered together in our dorm room for a time of prayer. And we just, I think we, we were really doing out of desperation for him. It, it was not like, oh, let's go seek a Holy Spirit. We wanted to make sure our professor, who we loved, did not die. Praise God, he did not at that time. But we came together. And we just had one, one of our friends on the guitar, maybe 20 of us. And he came. Stretch your hands. Just, just stretch out your hands. He came. Holy Spirit came. Right now, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Oh, Holy Spirit, we accommodate you. If you have a prayer language, I encourage you right now to pray in the Holy Spirit. If you don't, that's fine. Just pray. Pray in English. I encourage you to even pray you pray the rosary. Oh, Ramasi. But Father, we ask you for that, God, because you said to me, Lord, I'm going to break out in the small groups. I'm going to break out in the bedrooms. I'm going to break out in the living rooms. I'm going, to be, I'm going to break out in the small gatherings, and the multitudes will come, and the multitudes will see fire on those gatherings. But who will host me? Oh, who will host my presence? Who will host me? Oh, Father. We will, Lord. We will. Show us what it looks like. Wow. Holy Spirit's here. I can't make that happen. All I did was remember what he did. I wish I could tell you more dynamics of that. We started to pray feverishly. Oh, God, you know, raise up Dr. Webb. And then the Holy Spirit just fell. And we started to cry out, started to worship. I believe he's going to break out in classrooms. He's going to break out in Bible schools. Don't look, don't think you need a whole bunch of people. They had 120 on the day of Pentecost, but a burning 120 is what summoned in the multitudes. I think for too long we've dictated to God what we want a move of the Holy Spirit to look like. Well, when we have the conference with 5,000 people and we've got the best music and the best speakers, you know what? I publish a lot of great speakers. I love these people. But do you know what? Right now, 21st century, the earth, our sons and daughters, they're not looking for a, 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 a show or a TED talk or a fancy speaker. They want to know, does God rend the heavens and come down? So I want to prophesy. We were talking about the candle of prophecy, and you know what prophecy does? One of the things about prophecy is when we share what God has done in the past, that's not meant just to be a nice story or a history lesson. It prophesies that the God who moved will do it again. And that the God who moved back then at a certain time, he's not done. I just want to remind you of some things. Just stir your faith. I wrote down the Lord is looking at the day of small beginnings, evaluating how we steward his sacred presence. Father's Day of 1995 in Pensacola, Florida, there was an outpouring of the Spirit called the Brownsville Revival. But do you know what? We know millions came to that church. Thousands were saved at the altars, but it began in the desperate prayers of one pastor and a group of people, small group of people on Sunday nights who said, we're gonna give our Sunday night service to prayer. That is, where that, that is what positioned them to have a suddenly move of God. January 1994, there was a little church on the Toronto runway. The Toronto Airport Christian Fellowship, pastors John and Carol Arnott. We see the church now, which is a huge auditorium, thousands of people. Do you know how many people they had? Interestingly enough, recorded 120. Baptist vineyard minister, from 
Missouri, Randy Clark, only had a couple of sermons, wasn't even quite confident God was going to do anything, got up there and just shared his story about how he got touched by the Holy Spirit. And then at the end, he just gave an invitation for people to come, get prayed for. Nothing spectacular, but at that invitation, God struck like lightning. And I have an eyewitness, a friend of mine who was there, and she said, we walked by the church. We looked through the window where we could see the sanctuary, and we didn't see any people. They didn't see any people. There were supposed to be people in there because they were having a service. They were literally not just on the ground. People were under the chairs, wailing, laughing, being touched by the power of God. 120, not, not 5,000. There were 120 there. Hebrides Revival, late 1940s. It began with two 80-plus-year-old women crying out, believing a promise of God in Isaiah 44, holding that up to God, saying, Lord, you said you'd pour out water on dry ground. And the islands, I'm not just talking about one little town or city, the islands of the Hebrides right off of Scotland were saturated in the presence of God. If some of these are new to you, I just encourage you to look them up because all of these started, do you see the common denominator? With a few. Bethel Bible College, not Bethel and Reading Church, Bethel Bible College, Topeka, Kansas. I wrote this down. Charles Parham, who is a professor teacher, he set 40 students on an assignment to determine the biblical evidence for the baptism of the Spirit, <laughs> and he actually told them to report on their findings in three days. I guess he had to go lecture somewhere. He came back, <laughs> and then he came back. They had a watch, a night watch service. It was New Year's 1900 going into 1901. I think there was like 40 people, along with maybe 75 people from the neighboring area, and Agnes Osman, spoken tongues. Why is that significant? It's really one of the first recorded experiences of the phenomenon speaking in tongues in the 20th century. 40 people, 40 students, maybe with 75. Not, not big numbers, but big hunger. Not big numbers. I just have a few more because again, I think this is helpful because what God did, listen, he may not do it the same way that he did it here, but he wants to move again, and he is not restricted by how many people are here. The New York City Noon Prayer Meeting, this was held at Fulton Street. I love this. In the mid-1800s, I was actually just there in New York City. Uh, Dutch Sheets, who has his Give Him 15, uh, has been talking about these historic revivals. Well, we went there, and it started by a guy named Jeremiah Lamphere, and this, he was a businessman who felt compelled to just do a prayer meeting, prayer gathering. I'm so glad that he did not have 21st century church growth methods dictating to him how to do things. Why do I say that? He opened up the doors and a walloping six people showed up. Do you know what would happen, though, seriously, today in the 21st century, if that happened? We would assume that because six people showed up, then that's obviously not something God wants us to do. Let's close it down and figure something out. But I want to encourage you, and I don't know if this is a word just for all of you individually, corporately, but one of the things we need to do specifically in prayer, we cannot back down and we cannot let up, specifically in the day of small beginnings, because he continued, and those prayer meetings... First of all, they had to rent multiple facilities because they got filled up with hundreds, if not thousands. And that was a catalytic movement in prayer for all the revivals and awakenings that happened the remainder of the 1800s. But could you imagine if Jeremiah Lamphere was like, oh, there's only six people here? What can God do with six people? We're going to just shut this down. That is the methodology that we use today. That's it. Look what he did with 12. 12 disciples who changed and radicalized the world. Asbury Revival of 1970, it says, for a month, a small group of students had been getting up half hour early each morning for prayer, Bible study, and planning their day with God. Key phrase, small group of students. I have just two more. Azusa Street, April 9th, 1906, William Seymour and a small group of people gathered at the Bonnie Bray House, it started with one person, one person speaking in tongues, then six more, and it says, news circulated and crowds gathered. What if God is looking at how we steward the day of small beginnings? What if he will entrust the multitudes to us 
if we actually are looking for those suddenly outbreaks of God, perhaps in some unusual places, small places, dare I say manger-like places. Doesn't that kind of tie it back to who will make room? He is looking for the manger. He is looking for that person that acts as a manger, just like the manger of old that held the baby Jesus, and that person says, God, I will make room for you. And the last one I have here, Duquesne University, 1967. There was a retreat with 25 people. They went to, the funny thing is that the name of the retreat center was called the Ark and Dove. Ark and Dove Retreat Center. And then interestingly enough, it says Saturday night, they were having a birthday party. They were all going there because they were seeking the Holy Spirit. A few of them had experienced the baptism of the Spirit. They were going there to really go after God. And that night, they were doing a birthday party for somebody. And then the students just started to go up the stairs to an area. I think they called it the upper room. He likes upper rooms. And let me just read to you very briefly what happened. And then we're going to pray. And then we'll see what God just wants to do. But... It says, that night the Lord brought the whole group into the chapel. I found my prayers pouring forth that the others might come to know him too. My former shyness about praying aloud was completely gone as the Holy Spirit spoke through me. The professors then laid hands on some of the students, but most of us received the baptism of the Spirit while kneeling before the sacred sacrament in prayer. Some of us started speaking in tongues. Others received gift of discernment, prophecy, and wisdom. But the most important gift was the fruit of love, which bound the whole community together. In the Lord's spirit, we found a unity we had long tried to achieve on our own. And then, interestingly enough, Vincent Sinan, who wrote this book, who is my professor at Regent, he says this, as these Catholic seekers prayed through to Pentecost, many things familiar to classical Pentecostals began to take place. Some laughed uncontrollably in the spirit, well, one young man rolled across the floor in ecstasy, shouting praises to the Lord, weeping and speaking in tongues, characterized this beginning of the movement in the Catholic Church. Charismatic Catholic renewal. So that's my question. Who will make room? Who will not follow the example of the innkeeper? But who will make room for the move of God? And the good news is this, I believe tonight, if we can all stand, and then Kim, you can come up, is there any instruction that I need before you, you're, we're, we're teaming up on doing this tonight. I want, I want us to go after God and. Um, we can have our students come down, do you want to? Yes. Okay, so any of our encounter students that are here, if you guys want to make your way to the front, we're just going to have them kind of line up here in teams and um, when, it, when we're ready to pray. Yep, yep. You guys come on down yeah. and get prayer. And are you good time-wise? I yeah. want to be respectful. All right. I was seeing if our musician, or yeah, yeah, our, our piano guy would. would. Uh, did, did Nathan leave? Or can you go just a few more minutes, Glenn? Okay. Yeah, yeah, thank yeah. Thank you. Would you. Thank you so much. Yep. Oh, thank you. You're, you're very kind. Thank you. Would you mind pl playing the Let It Rain bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, all right. So yeah, our students yeah. are going to just line up here, and yeah. you guys know you can break in. Just pair up two people. Yeah. Um, our students, I just want to say the, the Duquesne University uh, experience w is really how our Encounter Campus yeah. came to be. Uh, if it hadn't been for their faithfulness and just pursuing the intimacy of the Holy Spirit that night, you know, we wouldn't have people like Ralph Martin who came and talked last time. We wouldn't have Dr. Mary Healy. We wouldn't have Jeff Cavins. We yep. wouldn't have Scott Hahn. Yeah, I mean, there's so many, so many Catholic leaders that have been touched because of what some, a small group, what, yeah. 24 Catholics yes, yes. did in an upper room. And we joke here at our school because um, when we can't have the sanctuary space, we go to the upper room in the parish center across the way. And I'm just so touched because I think all our students will agree with me tonight. Like, we're expecting this. Yeah. We've, we've been expecting this. And I know if you're here from our diocese, you, you feel it. That's why you're here. You've been expecting this night, this suddenly. 
Nice. Um, we're just so honored to just be here and pouring in, and that's what we're doing. We're, we're the few yeah. coming together, right. pursuing Jesus. And, and I have so much um, love and faith in our students yes. tonight. We've been praying and learning how to just grow in the power and love of the Holy Spirit. We've been embracing his gifts, and we've been learning how to pray, and um, we're seeing the miracles just last Monday. I mean, we have so many testimonies even we could share, but, um, you know, he's healing necks. He's healing, um, aligning hips. He's taking away arthritis pain. The Lord is showing up as our healer because when we're healed, we can then receive the even greater gift, which I think is the true gold of the Holy Spirit, which is intimacy with Jesus and the Father. Healing is just the, the breadcrumbs of the meal. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is just the beginning. That's why we teach healing in the second quarter because everything that flows from this is just more. It's more. Yes. We got to get over this, right? With the, like the healing, the signs and wonders, that's not the whole picture. Yeah. There's more. That's yeah, just the that's beginning. Good, Kim. That's, that's right. That is the norm. Yeah, yeah. yeah My yeah. students, we, we know I say, you know, don't make it weird because it's not weird, it's normal. Sure. So now I'm going to call you all normal, all right? Yes. <laughs> that's so good. Thank yeah. you for reminding oh, us about that. Oh, this is the good. normal. Yeah. Yeah. This is the normal life that God has prepared for us. And we're just so glad to see that His Spirit is just sharing it. It's going out. The truth is going out into the manger. Amen. Yeah, yeah. That's the word. Yep. Oh, the church Lord. is in the manger, folks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Praise God. I want to encourage anybody right now. Um, whew, there's presence of the Lord. Let's just, drift, let's just lift up our hands right now. We're going to press into God. Yeah, yeah. My brother, keep playing that. Let it rain. Let it rain. Father, yeah, just lift your voice. Come on, just lift your, we need to get used to this. Father, we ask, Zechariah 10.1, we ask for rain in the time of rain. That's it. I feel the fire of God right now. If you actually would like to be prayed for, and, and again, I'm not sure the protocol here, I want to encourage you to come on up. I want to, if you are hungry, saying, God, I want to be, I want to be, Lord, a move of God. I, I want to carry your fire. I want to carry your rain, Lord. I encourage you at any time you can come up, but we're just going to go after it. Let it rain. Let it rain. We want to see what it looks like. That's it. If you need prayer Gates for anything tonight, come on down. Yeah, yeah. Come on down. Let it Just lift your voice. Yeah, oh, man. Yeah. You can kneel where you are. We don't have to be. Yeah, that's it. Open the floodgates. Here's my prayer. God, I want to see what it looks like. I want to see what it looks like, God. It's okay to lift your voice in desperation, God. I want to know what it looks like for there to be rain from heaven. I want to know what it looks like for a building to be filled with the Spirit of God. Oh, let it rain. God, for the sake of our children, for the sake of our children who are running away from the faith, God, it has to rain. There's got to be a suddenly. There's got to be an outbreak of the Spirit. More, Lord. More, Lord. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Holy Spirit. In fact, right now, I'm going to encourage you, if you have, ch and, and, and again, we're all family here. If you have children who have gone away from God, if you have children that you are praying for and you're believing for them to come back home, there's no, I, I want to encourage you to come up here. I want to pray for you. Because he said, in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. I'm not just praying your kids come back to church. I'm praying your sons and daughters will prophesy that the word of the Lord with power will be in their mouth. Thank you, Lord. This is kind of how I minister. I love this. We have our teams here, but I'm just going to just navigate what the Holy Spirit's doing. Thank you. Man, there's a presence of the Lord. Let it rain. Just lift your voice. Let it rain. That's it. That's it. Open the floodgates. Yeah, you said, let it rain. Jesus. I think we might just need to kneel right now. <laughs> I knew. I do. You can kneel where you are. Open the gates of heaven. Let it yeah. rain. Rain on the palm beaches, God. Rain on a dry and thirsty land. Floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. That's it.
that's it. Come with waves, God. Come with weight. Open. Yeah, yeah. We're going to prophesy right now. I prophesy right now to those who meet in their homes for prayer. I prophesy right now to those who gather together, just like I did, and it doesn't even seem spiritual, but you come together and you find yourself praying. I prophesy that you had eyes to see the outbreak of God, that you wouldn't turn it away because it looks different. I prophesy to those of you who go to the bank and to Walmart and to Publix, and you recognize the stirring of the Holy Spirit to maybe minister to somebody. Doesn't need to be weird, but it should be normal because you carry the move of God. You carry the Holy Spirit. He's not a baby in a manger anymore, but we are his house. This is his beautiful house, but we are his house. Whoa, Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. I just can't escape that, God. Isaiah 64, 1. Rend the heavens. Rend the heavens. Tear open the heavens and come down. Jesus. Ah, that's it. That's it. That's it, God. Just put your hands on me. No more dry and thirsty land, God. No more dry and thirsty land, God. Your church is full of rain. Your church is full of living water. Yeah, that's you. That's you. Your church releases the river of God. Yeah. Father, right now, I declare healing. I declare healing in the presence of the Lord. I thank you, Lord, that Jesus bore our sicknesses and he took our griefs. I speak to cancer right now in the name of Jesus, and I declare in the presence of God, be healed, be healed, be healed, not just for a healing, but for a testimony. And, you know, brother or sister, if that's for you, if you're dealing with cancer and you need healing, I want to encourage you to go back to your doctor. There's so... There's such an increasing, intensifying presence of God here. I want to encourage you, go back to your doctor and get checked out. Just receive it. Receive it. I don't want hype. I don't want emotionalism. We want the power of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is beautiful. We're just staying in this. Is this okay? There's a wonderful presence of the Lord. Father, for those who have never tangibly experienced the Holy Spirit, I felt like I was going to say something like, well, I'm going to pray for you. And the Lord said, no, 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 tonight I've been here. The Lord said, tell them, to, tell them this. It looks different from person to person. It looks, person, it looks different from experience to experience. Tonight I kneeled down there during worship just with tears tears. That's how I experienced him tonight. Sometimes it's silence, awe, reverence. Sometimes it's shaking. He can touch. Here's our, here's our prayer to the Lord. Holy Spirit, whatever you want to do. <laughs> whatever you want to do, you move on your own terms, Holy Spirit. Yeah. I do believe, though, today, I, I just sensing it in the soil, in the ground of the land here in Palm Beach, I believe he wants to pour out his spirit. I believe he wants to break out. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Yeah, for the sake of our nation, God, let it rain. <laughs> for the sake of our nation, God. God, for the sake of those in the womb, let it rain. Jesus, God. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. There must be, guys, there must be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in this nation so that people would come back to a place of a sane mind. There must be a church that walks in power. Would you like prayer? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Father, we thank. Do you mind if I put my hand on you? 
Father, I know I need you. Oh, we're, we want to pray. You can sit. Oh, you, we can pray any way you want. <laughs> yep. I'm just going to believe Holy Spirit's going to touch me. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, yeah, the Holy Spirit's touching you. That's why you're. <laughs> that's why you're acting that way. Spirit of God, I speak to all pain, all physical dysfunction right now. And I thank you right now in the name of Jesus. God, give her the gift of a testimony tonight. Wow. Give her the gift of full mobility. Yeah. Just in the presence of God. That it wouldn't be... Uh, yeah. Father, your, your daughter loves you. She worships. Your presence is just touching her, Father. But God, I thank you for strength. I thank you for strength in her body in the name of Jesus. Saturate. Mm. And we're going to keep praying, and I'm going to pray as we're led, but... Uh, I may pop off the microphone a couple times just to pray specifically for some things. Had range of mobility return. Yes, praise God. Anyone else have shoulder issues? The Lord is, is healing shoulders tonight. Leah's coming down. <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep. We don't need this.
Yes, yes, we prayed before. Yep, yep. Oh, yes, we did. Father, we thank you for healing. We thank you for your presence, God. We thank you for total and complete healing. Father, that he'd go back, and I thank you for measurable results, God, that he'd be able to look and say, things are different from when they were before I came to this gathering and this meeting. In Jesus' name, let it be so, God. Let it be so. In Jesus' name. I wanted to pray for you guys. Have you come to any of our, have I ever met you guys? Or? Yes, I have met you. Okay, I was going to say, you, you look I, I remember, I remember meeting you guys. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. So you guys minister here and do this. Okay. Yeah, I, I would love. I, I here. Let me. I don't need this thing. Is that all right? Is that, I'll take you off. Yeah. Father, I thank you. Remind me of your name. Yeah, 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 yes. But that's a sign that often that God, okay, I'm feeling this kind of phenomenon, so I need to go with it. So, yeah, let, let it be intensified that, Lord. That's a confirmation then. So, so bless you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, while, while I have the microphone here, I think the last thing I want to do tonight while we're all still here, and this is wonderful, and, and people are being prayed for, um, as I was praying for some, I want to pray specifically for, I call it the well of revival. There is a well of revival, I believe, here, and I felt like the Holy Spirit said, pray for the Duquesne University well of revival to be reopened. A well of revival is a place, a geography, a time in history where God moved in the past, and like in the Old Testament, it talks about how Isaac redug the wells of his father Abraham to go back to that source of water. So, so for those of you who are still joining us, would you mind would you mind standing with me and being my intercession team? I want to pray for this. I felt like the Lord put that on my little list for tonight, and we want to pray. We want to pray. Yeah, let let's pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you for what you've done, and you're still doing it tonight. Bible says in Isaiah 6, the train of his robe filled the temple, which in the Hebrew means God came in the building, and because he's God, he kept coming in, because <laughs> there was more of him. So Father, right now, as we're standing on ground, as we're, yeah, as we're standing on ground in a church that is connected, God, to the Catholic Church, I believe you wanted us to say, spring up, O oh well. That, God, that well of revival that was dug in Duquesne University in 1967 that ignited the Catholic charismatic movement, do it again, Lord. 
Renew your wonders in our day, God. Let there be a fresh breath of the Spirit on it. And Lord, when I say do it again, it doesn't need to look like it did in 1967. But all I know is that there are certain things that always happen when the Holy Spirit comes. So Lord, do it, God. And we will gather together, and I know they're going to continue to do their encounter sessions and school and gatherings like this. And the Lord says, every time you gather, you're redigging. You're redigging that well. So Holy Spirit, I thank you that you would even pick up where things left off in that great move of God. It's always been going. It's a river that's always been going. But Lord, I thank you that you turn it up. Turn it up, God. Turn up and intensify the power, God. Whoa, thank you, Lord. Feel the Holy Spirit right now on that. Even as you reemphasize to us tonight, it doesn't take a thousand people. It could just take the people right here praying in this room. Because he can save by many or a few. That's what the scripture says about our God. His hand is not short. So Father, let it be known that in the Palm Beaches that this cathedral is a place of Holy Spirit fire, of Pentecost fire. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Like I said before, I'm here under Kim's authority and supervision. But I believe Holy Spirit's moving. So you just receive. I don't want to monkey around with anything that God's doing right now. It is holy. It is pure. And to me, this might just be what the next move of God looks like where some people sit, some people kneel, some people come to the front and get prayer, and people can experience wonderful Holy Spirit however they want. Because here's the deal, every time Holy Spirit touches somebody, do you know what it reveals? Jesus is alive, because he's the Spirit of Christ. Spirit of Christ, we honor you. Whoa, there's something on that. Spirit of Jesus. He's not separate from Jesus. Blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Whoa. Yeah, let's just take a moment. I feel like Jesus is, yeah. Holy Spirit saying, I, glor I come to glorify Jesus. Every time I move, I glorify Jesus. Every time the Spirit of God touches somebody, a body gets healed, a life is delivered. When somebody weeps or trembles or falls under the power of God, it reveals Jesus is alive. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes. I still, I still use that. Oh, I, I'll, never forget that. I'll never forget that. Well, I will, I will never give out names, so I, I won't. But, that, but she did it again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, 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 I don't want to dishonor you. So, yeah. yeah. She did it again at John's point. That was the that he was here. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's got a lot of pain in her body. Right? Pain in her body. Yeah. What, yeah, please, please. What is, what is that? It's the thing. Specifically for the stuff that's giving you pain in your body. Uh, I, uh, 
Father, I think. Is that okay if I put my hand on your shoulder? You can, yeah. demonstrated to Catherine that you're real, God. Oh, Father, we can't make that stuff up. We know it's real. So, Father, I thank you. And, Lord, even right now, I speak to any heaviness, any sadness to go. That's not her portion. Which means you're not supposed to live with that. That's not God's will. I thank you tonight. There would be a trade in the Spirit where she would trade, God, heaviness for joy. Heaviness for joy. Thank you, Lord. All pain go in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I thank you, Lord. direction on just how to pray. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you that it ends tonight. Amen. It ends tonight. The pain, the darkness, the fear. Yes. It ends tonight. Yes. Powerful presence of God. In Jesus' name. I believe that. I feel, I feel that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, no. But just hold on to that. I, I believe even what she saw in the spirit. It's just a confirmation. Yep, yep. God gives us those as gifts. That's beautiful. That's. I do too. Yep, yep. Big, big, big calling. Yes, yes. Yep, yep. Yeah. Goodness, I, I, well, I feel even a, a, a lightness there where, where something shifted yeah. concerning that. Um, so, yeah, yeah. That's all right. You just test it out. Yeah. You, you don't, there's, listen, there's no pressure. Yeah, I know. You, you will. I, be, I believe that. Yep, yep. Oh, wonderful. All right. Uh, yeah, well, I, 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 I feel the same. <laughs> I love this, but I, I may or may not have had many meetings where after something like this, I go to McDonald's, yeah. which don't tell anybody that. But, but you get yeah. We're here all weekend. Now, I go home back to Dallas tomorrow because we're back in a couple of weeks for, for Heidi. Yeah, yeah. So. Yes, yes. Oh, come on. All right.